हेलो एवरीवन वंस अगेन वेलकम बैक टू दिस रोज प्रोजेक्ट व्हिच इज कंडक्टेड बाय द रयत शिक्षण संस्था एजीएम कॉलेज कराड माय सेल्फ चोपड़े एनपी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू द डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक रिप्रोडक्शन इन लोअर एंड हायर ऑर्गेनिज्म सो लेट अस डिस्कस आवर रिमेनिंग पॉइंट्स ऑफ द दिस टॉपिक सो दिस पॉइंट दैट इज द फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम so the in this uh, female reproductive system the female rep reproductive system consists of the pair of ovaries along with the pair of the oviduct uterus cervix vagina and external genitalia so these all are organ are located in the pelvic region so you know pelvic region pelvic upper side pectoral region and lower side that is the pelvic region so these are all are parts so it consists of in this female reproductive system consists of this ovaries once again revise pair of oviduct uterus cervix vagina external genitalia these all parts are located in the pelvic region clear then so these parts of this system along with the pair of the mammary gland so are integrated structurally and the functionally to support this process of the ovulation fertilization pregnancy birth and child care okay so means mammary glands are integrated structurally and functionally to support this all process clear then so the ovaries are the primary female sex organ that produce the female gamete female gamete ova you know like in the male reproductive system that is the sperm so here in the female reproductive system that is the ova female gamete ova male gamete sperm so here so the female gamete ovum and the several steroid hormone that is the ovarian hormone okay so so this is the structure of ovary ovaries are primary female sex organ that produce so different type first one is the gamete ovum and other some different types of several steroid hormone that is the ovarian hormone okay then so the ovaries are located in one each side of the lower abdomen region so that is the location of this ovary then so look at this that is the diagrammatic section view of the female reproductive system so look at this so these are the both side this red part indicate the ovary so this part over is called as the oviduct so in this oviduct oviduct is included in in it uh, consist of the first this is finger like part that is the fimbri this next one part that is the infundibulum ampulla isthmus and so this are inner side part that is called as a uterus okay and this upper part is called as a uterine fundus okay so in the inner so this uterus part is made up of the three types of layer huh? first one outer layer is called as a perimetrium so middle layer is called as a myometrium huh? so, myometrium because which is made up of the muscle and inner layer is called as the endometrium okay and the lower surface so this part is called as a cervix and so this the two this space is called as a cervical canal and in the last part that is the vaginal vagina that is the external opening so this all part okay so this is isthmus ampulla and infundibulum this part all is called as a fallopian tube or the oviduct clear this is the diagram diagrammatic figure of this female reproductive system clear no doubt then so the each ovary is about the 2 to 4 cm in length so this is a length structure of this ovary each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm length and it is connected to the pelvic wall and the uterus by the ligament okay for the help of ligament the ovary is a connected to the pelvic wall and the uterus then so the each ovary is covered by the thin epithelium which is enclosed the ovarian stroma and the stroma is divided into the two zone that is the peripheral cortex and inner medulla okay stroma is divided into first one each ovary is covered by the thin peri uh, uh, thin uh, epithelium which is enclosed by the ovarian stroma and ovaria divided into the two two parts peripheral peripheral cortex and inner medulla then so the oviduct that means the fallopian tube so both are same uterus vagina constitute the female accessory duct clear so who is called as a accessory female accessory duct duct means a tube like portion oviduct 
then uterus and vagina so these are the all is called as a female accessory duct then so the each fallopian tube is about the 10 to 12 cm long and extend from the periphery of each ovary fallopian tube extend from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus okay uterus and the parts closer to the ovary is the funnel shape called as a infundibulum okay so what is infundibulum so the part which is a closer to the ovary the part is a closer to the uh, uh, ovary that is called as a which is a funnel shape shape what which shape funnel shape and uh, it is called as a infundibulum then so the edges of the infundibulum possess the finger like projection called as a fimbri okay so which is helping the collection of the ovum after the ovulation okay function of the fimbri to collect the ovum after the ovulation then the infundibulum leads to the wider parts of the oviduct called as the ampulla infundibulum leads to the next parts of the is oviduct that is called as the ampulla so this the last part of this oviduct is the isthmus and has the narrow lumen and it is joined to the uterus okay so these are the three part first one is the fimbri okay three parts of the oviduct or fallopian tube first one that is the fimbri second one is the ampulla and third one is the isthmus so these are the three parts of this fallopian tube clear then the uterus is a single and uh, it is also called as a worm uterus is also called as a worm so the shape of this uterus is uh, like the inverted pear inverted means inverted inverted pear like so it is uh, supported by the ligament attached to the pelvic wall so supports for this uh, supported by this ligament attached which ligament is attached to the pelvic wall clear then the uterus open into the vagina through the narrow cervix and the cavity of the cervix is called as a cervical canal and all of which along the vagina from the birth canal so this cervical canal is a also called as what is the role of the cervical canal to form hmm? to uh, to form uh, vagina from the birth canal okay during the uh, delivery so the wall of the uterus has the three layer of the tissue uterus okay first one that is the perimetrium which is a external thin membrane then middle membrane is called as a myometrium which is made up of the smooth muscle cell and third one it is the endometrium which is a inner glandular layer okay glandular which is made up of the glands different types of gland okay so uh, these are the three layer made up of the uterus huh? so these are three tissue layer of the uterus first one that is the perimetrium then middle one outer one that is the perimetrium middle one that is the myometrium and innermost that is the endometrium that is the glandular layer okay then the endometrium undergoes the cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle while the myometrium exhibit strong construction during the delivery of the baby okay clear keep it mind so the endometrium undergoes the cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle then so the now the next point that is the ovarian histology of the mature female the in the histology of the ovary we have the discussed the primary structure of the ovary now next the different stages of the development of the oocyte can be seen these are these changes in the ovary are the cyclic occurring during the each menstrual cycle and it involves the maturation of the primordial follicle into the primary then secondary and graphene follicle so it is a pathway look at this so it involves the maturation of the primordial cell first one that is the primordial follicle then into the primary then secondary and then the graphene follicle okay so each primary follicle has the multi-layered cubital follicular cell okay then the stroma cell add the theca over the follicle so then now the changes into the secondary follicle okay clear understand so there is a growth of the oocyte and the granulosa cell increase the number there is a growth and oocyte and the granulosa cell increase the number so they start the producing the hormone called as the estrogen okay so look at this that is the structure of ts of ori so look at this these are the part is called as a blood vessel and this small part is called as a primordial follicle so this is a structure 
during the day first okay so after the primordial cell now the next part that is the primary follicles primary follicles after the primary follicles that will convert it into the secondary follicles okay and secondary into the tertiary follicle during the day 12 so after the day 12 so the tertiary follicles get matured okay now the next part that is the mature follicle and this mature follicle the inside part contain the oocyte contain oocyte and during the day 40 during the day 14 during the menstruation cycle so these oocytes are released out that is called as ovulation ovulated ovum okay during the ovulation these oocytes are released okay that is called as ovulation so look at this that is the ovo ovulated ovum okay so then, uh, then uh, those this part is called as a germinal epithelium this outer coating then this next part that is called as a corpus luteum hmm? and corpus so there is a no pregnancy so uh, this part is a waiting for this uh, sperm entry of the sperm clear so these are the simple structure of the ts of ovary primordial follicle primary follicle secondary follicle tertiary follicle and then mature follicle and after the ovulation it is called as the ohm okay so these the secondary follicle grow into the grapian follicle by the addition of the more follicular cell okay so the at this phase process the maturation of the follicle takes place they begin to the move toward the surface of ovary okay so the grapian follicle press presses against the thin wall of the ovary giving in a blistered appearance like blistered appearance so the eggs is released from the grapian follicle during the ovulation and the remaining parts of the follicle changes into the a temporary endocrine gland called as a corpus luteum so this is point important so eggs is released so during the ovulation the eggs are released from the grapian follicle okay grapian follicle and the remaining parts of this grapian follicle is called as the corpus luteum okay that is called as a corpus luteum so which is a endocrine gland temporary endocrine gland so then if the fertilization does not take place the corpus luteum degenerate and into the white scar called as a corpus vulpicum so this part also important so first part a temporary endocrine gland that is called as a corpus luteum so there if the there is a no fertilization takes place if fertilization does not takes place the corpus luteum degenerate degenerate into the white scar and this is called as a corpus albicon got it now the next one that is the structure of the grapian follicle look at so the grapian follicle is the mature ovarian follicle grapian follicle is a mature ovarian follicle and the and the eccentric secondary oocyte is surrounded by the non cellular layer of the zona pellucida which is secreted by the vitelline membrane of the oocyte okay so the secondary oocyte the outer coating is called as a zona pellucida okay which is secreted by the vitelline membrane of the oocyte the outermost protective and fibrous covering is called as a theca externa outer most and protective fibrous covering is called as a theca externa then the inner and inner to its cellular the cellular theca interna theca externa and theca inner side that is the theca interna then it produces the hormones that is called as a estrogen okay so the inner to the theca interna the follicular cells form the membra uh, membrana granulosa okay then from the membrana granulosa the cells differentiate into the dis, uh, discus uh, proligerous and the corona radiata so these are the cells differentiate into the okay this membrane membrana granulosa okay which is secreted by the inner to the theca interna the follicular cell from the membrana granulosa and this membrana granulosa cells differentiate into the these two cells which is a discus proligerous and this corona radiata cell so <coughs> sorry so the uh, cumulus the operus is the term used for the oocyte and the surrounding the granulosa cell 
A fluid filled cavity called as anthrum lies between the oocyte and the membrana granulosa. Okay, then it is filled with the fluid called as a liquid folliculi. Okay. So look at this now the next one that is the female external genitalia so look at this figure so there are some parts so this part outer part is called as a labia majora so this inner small part is called as a labia minora then this inner touch cavity is called as a vagina this upper part small part is called as a urethra this upper apex part is called as a clitoris and this is called as a anus okay undigested food waste material are removed from this region anus so it includes the moon's pubis labia majora labia minora hymen and clitoris so these are parts these are different parts of this female external genitalia then so the moon's pubis first it is a question of the fatty tissue covered by the skin and the pubic hair means upper part So the labia majora that is the this one part labia majora are the fleshy fold of the tissue which is extend down from the moon's pubis and the surrounding to the vaginal opening. So this surrounding part all this side also and this side also is called as the labia majora. Then so the labia minora are paired. Now the next one that is the labia minora. Labia ma minora is the are the pair fold of the tissue under the labia majora under the labia majora and the opening of this vagina is open covered partially by the membrane called as a hymen okay cover partially called as a hymen so then now the next one that is the clitoris clitoris is a tiny finger like structure which is a lie at the upper junction of the two labia minora above the urethral opening just look so that is the structure of the clitoris okay Clitoris is a tiny finger like structure which is a lie the upper junction of the two labia minora above the urethral opening where above the urethral opening so this is a urethral opening and the upper part is called as a clitoris okay then the hymen is often torn during the first coitus okay upon torn during the first coitus that is the intercourse however it can also be broken by the sudden fall jolt insertion of the vaginal tampon active participation in the some sports like horseback riding cycling etc okay so in some women the hymen persists the even after the coitus so the in fact the presence and absence of the hymen is not a reliable indicator to the virginity of the sexual experience so this sentence keep it mind so this is a very very important okay so look at this now the next one that is the diagrammatic sectional view of the memory gland so memory gland in this structure figure so so this structure is a uh, helpful for the newborn baby for the feeding breast feeding okay everyone know so in this structure the this part is called as a nipple for the sucking of the blood this part outer part is the areola and in this country there are different types of the lacteal duct okay inner part is called as a memory duct ampulla region memory alveoli and memory lobe okay so this part is called as a rib huh? this memory gland is attached to the rib okay and this inner side part is called as a muscles of the rib okay so now overall what is the function of this memory gland to nourish the newborn baby hmm? to suck the blood okay from the for the help of this nipple the newborn baby can suck the breast feeding to milk from this region nipple okay so a functional memory gland is a characteristics of the all female mammals okay all female mammals have the memory gland so the memory glands are the paired structure that is the breast that contain the glandular tissue and a variable amount of fat just look at this okay large amount of fat the glandular tissue of the each breast is a div uh, divided into the 15 to 20 memory uh, lobes that contain the cluster of the cell called as alveoli okay then the cells of the alveoli secrete the milk so now the what is the function of this alveoli to secrete the milk just just look this alveoli this part called as alveoli now the what is the function of this alveoli to secrete the milk 
okay the cells of the alveoli secrete the milk which is uh, stored in the cavity of the lumen called as the alveoli okay then the alveoli open into the memory tubules and the tubules of each lobe join to the memory duct okay simple so the several memory duct to join from the wider memory ampulla which is uh, connected to the lactiferous duct and through the which milk is uh, suck out okay firstly so this region this is a fatty region so in this uh, memory uh, memory alveolus so that is the function of this which is responsible for the to secrete the milk hmm? this all milk are collected for the help of this memory duct ampulla and finally lactiferous duct and this for the help of the nipple this milk are sucked by this newborn baby okay so this is a very simple structure of this memory gland so i hope so this is parts uh, this all parts of this female reproductive system are beneficial for you and the remaining parts of this topic we will see in the next lecture thank you very much thank you thank you